In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Sort of in keeping with the prior segment that we just did, it's incredibly important to understand that if you are a Christian, that we are going to face persecution. And I think that a lot of Christians do themselves and the world a, a disservice when they act as though they're surprised that this is going to happen, that the world is not going to capitulate to them, and they understand that that the world is not always going to look favorably on them, and that the world is going to hate them for holding on to their own values. This is something that is not only... The, the, the Bible doesn't tell us is not going to happen, but it actually does the opposite, and Jesus actually tells me it is going to happen. And you need look no further than his talk with the apostles not long before his own crucifixion in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 18 through 20. Jesus says, If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because this the world hates you. Remember the word that I have said to you, a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. One of the important things to really understand about what Jesus is saying to his apostles in these couple of verses is that he knows they're about to face some really difficult trials. He knows what they're about to go through is going to be nigh unbearable. And yet, he knows that it's something that they're going to have to endure and go through. You see, the thing that I love about Christ, many things, but one of the things chiefest among them is that he doesn't sugarcoat things. He tells you the way that it is. See, he didn't lie to his disciples. He didn't tell them that they weren't going to have to suffer many things. He didn't tell them that they were going to uh, have good, rich, uh, enriched, fulfilling lives. He told them point blank, you're going to suffer a lot if you choose to be my disciple. And then followed that up with, but it's still the right thing to do. Follow me. The thing that I think is so important to understand about the life of Christ is that ultimately, he is sending people in as sheep among wolves. And he knows that this evil and fallen world that he came to rescue is filled with wolves. He knows that a lot of us are going to get torn to pieces and that we are going to lose this worldly battle. I mean, it's great to win a victory. It is. It's always great to win a victory for the Christian cause be that on the spiritual plane by bringing another soul to Christ, or less important, but also important, on the physical plane where we win some kind of cultural or political victory, and people start seeing an evil for what it is or a good for what it is. That's a good thing, too. But ultimately, that battle doesn't really matter all that much. It's still important, I mean, for goodness sake, I believe that. I've dedicated a pretty significant chunk of my life to doing that. But at the end of the day, that's a secondary victory. You see, we should not be surprised when we lose a lot of these battles, like we have with Chick-fil-A, like we have with Hallmark. Because Jesus tells us ahead of time that we're going to lose most of them, that the world is going to hate us, the world is going to revile us, and a lot of the things in this world are going to let us down. And that's just the way that it is. That's the way that being his disciple is going to look. So here's the question I want us to ask to give us some perspective. 
How many battles did Jesus win? How many battles did Jesus win? Did he win the cultural battle of his day? Well, I would say no, especially considering the culture of his day hated him so much they were willing to execute him publicly even though they couldn't prove he had committed a crime. That's a pretty good indication that you're not winning the cultural battle. He was able to kind of persuade Pilate, who was a governing official, and it seems that he had at least some sway over Herod, although Herod also executed his cousin and didn't do anything to help Jesus when he was in danger of being executed, so I don't know that we could say that he had much influence there. Did he win the battle with the Pharisees? Well, that's a big fat no. The Pharisees were still doing the same things they were doing before Jesus came as, as they were after he died. There were some that changed and some repented. There were some minor personal victories, but overall the Pharisees were still persecuting Christians pretty heavily after Jesus died. So by the world standard, Jesus lost pretty much every battle he was ever in. He won one, the battle with death the battle with sin, the battle to give people an opportunity to be forgiven of their sins and reunited with God. See, he was cool with losing all of the battles before that, all the cultural battles, all the physical battles, as long as he won that one battle. Because Jesus, I mean, he has the knowledge of the universe basically at his disposal. He could have won some of those cultural battles if he wanted to. There was a time where Greeks even offered him to basically come back with them and be the philosopher king. And Jesus is like, no, I don't really want to do that. Jesus was intelligent enough and had the power to, I'm sure, subjugate all people to him if he wanted to and establish an earthly kingdom. He didn't do it. Why? Because that's not what he came to do. He came here with one mission, to save his people from their sin. And he accomplished that mission. And I think that sometimes as Christians, when we see stuff like this happening over and over again, it is so easy to get disheartened. It is so easy to look at it and say, is what I'm doing even working? Does it even matter? Especially with some of the institutions like child slavery that is still incredibly predominant, especially in certain parts of the world, and it's, it's even really bad in places like Texas along the border. Especially with things like abortion still being legal, like, it's easy to, to want to pull your hair out, seeing some of the things that completely cut against everything that Jesus Christ taught about still going on in this world today, and you do sit there and wonder, like, Lord, am I even making a difference? The reason that I'm saying this is because remember that Jesus fought those battles too, and the world rejected him. But the reason that Jesus' mission was still an overwhelming success is because he didn't let winning those battles get in the way of his real mission. He told the truth. He wanted a lot of those people to reform, and some did. But ultimately, he never lost sight of his real goal. And as Christians, we can't either. I want us to win as many battles as we can on this side of eternity, but I understand, based on the scripture, we're going to lose most of them. And since we know ahead of time, we are guaranteed that the world is going to hate us, that we're going to lose most of those battles, doesn't it make more sense to keep our eye on the prize and to focus on the only goal that actually matters, seeking and saving the lost? That's the only thing that is ultimately going to matter. Is our soul right with God? Are the souls of people around us right with God? Ultimately, that's the only thing that makes a difference. And so, yeah, take our chicken sandwiches, take our Christmas movies, take everything else. If we lose them, and we have to lose them, and have to forego some things to win the overall victory, the one that Christ gave his life for, then that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. And I hope that my fellow Christians that get disheartened by stuff like this will remember that. 
because there's times where I have to remind myself of that on a pretty regular basis because I get bummed out too. But if we're going to be disciples of Christ, if we're going to be his followers and model Christ to the rest of the world, we have to keep our priorities straight and do exactly what he did, which is be willing to sacrifice the earthly battle to stick to our principles and do what Christ taught us to do. And ultimately, if we do that, we will share in the same victory that Jesus Christ did. That by all worldly standards looked like a, a complete and total defeat, being crucified like a criminal on a cross, and yet gave way to the greatest victory that mankind has ever experienced through Jesus Christ. Victory over death and a chance at eternal life. If we're going to live like Jesus, if we're going to follow in his footsteps, that's the goal that we have to constantly be working towards. Stay the course, friends. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime... I'm going to take a nap.